Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of In My Opinion. And we are back wearing are the back. same clothes as our previous episode because it's actually the same day, but you see the video in our day. Yes. My name is John. My name is Lester. And I am Brian. Yes. So you all know Brian from our previous episode. Okay. He is uh, TSL's boss man. And uh, today we're going to be talking about a topic that is very, 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 very relevant mm-hmm. about you know, especially coming from Bossman. But before that, okay, please follow us on Instagram, imo.pod. Yes. And uh, I don't know if this is already past the time skip, but in case it's not, uh, we're going to be taking a short break because Alessa has to go and study for finals. But if he somehow edited this before finals, then uh, please ignore what I just said. And think- let's get into it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's get into it, guys. So, I mean, uh, for the people who don't know Brian, I don't know TSL. So TSL is the smart local. It's a lifestyle company, a life, lifestyle com- publishing company. Lifestyle and travel. Content and they do company. other stuff as well. Like we have there are other sister sites like ebook, Marsha News, and Zula, mm. which all cover a different target audience as well and different type of yes. content. Uh. So Brian mm-hmm. is definitely no stranger to entrepreneurship or starting his own business. So we just wanted to you know get some ideas or like inspiration from him, considering that we are at least attempting to make some money out of this YouTube channel as much as it's not going too well. So let's <laughs> let's go into the first question. So, uh, I mean, when, when I first came into TSL, I mean, we all had this like internship book, right? But John, do you remember this? Like internship handbook? <laughs> I and think then, I have it here. Let me try to pull it up. There's, there's, there's a story. There's one whole page called Story of TSL for the people who don't know where he will talk through his... Uh, like his struggles about setting up TSL and everything. So I just thought it was something that would be interesting because not many people know this. I definitely didn't know until I came into TSL. So can you just tell me like what was the the whole experience starting TSL like from the start? Like how did it start out? What's the struggles like and everything? Struggles. There were many struggles. I remember <coughs> one struggle was you know, when we were at uh, Magnet office, uh, where we, the the office was like known as the haunted office lab and there was like a, oh my God. a few ghosts or like a ghost called <laughs> Jackie and oh God. why was it called Jackie? Uh, <laughs> because I think they were playing like some multiplayer game and then like suddenly there was this name Jackie which appeared and no one knew who that was. Okay, so uh, Oh shit. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> no, he asked Fauzi about this, you know. Uh, he he tells us this story of this pen just flying by itself. And you know, if it's like maybe if it's like someone who's not Fauzi, I'll be like, you know, a bit skeptical. But it's Fauzi, you know, and like Fauzi doesn't make stuff like this up. So Fauzi doesn't oh care about ghosts. Okay. <laughs> Guys, have you seen the USS <laughs> video with Fauzi? He lit he was he didn't give a shit about anyone. Yeah. And like, he's like Sexual the least reporting. scared about ghosts, man. But <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, but like other than that, I mean I I've heard a lot of stories from the McNair days. I, I was never in a in that era because when I came Neither in, was I. Oh yeah, John, you're actually not that. Yeah. Not that old. I, I For some reason, I keep thinking that you have been in TSL like forever. No, but funnily <laughs> enough, people actually keep asking me about like, hey, you remember last time McNair? Then I'm like, McNair? <laughs> 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 I'm like, what's McNair? <laughs> so like, I, I got it quite used to it. People be like, you know, last time, you know, our old office. Ah. Then I'm like, old office? If I wanted to be in one office. <laughs> <laughs> I think join, you joined TSL uh, like at the start, you know, like just when we moved to our new office. Essentially, I think mm. that was the point where you joined. Uh, and yeah, you know, back then in, in Magnair, right, uh, we even had this thing called a toilet queue, right? And it was Ooh. because we only had one toilet and oh, well, <laughs> on the ground floor and there were like 30 people or something, you know, sharing that toilet. Mm. And it wasn't like gender split, you know, so yeah, not very good. <laughs> not very oh. good. Uh, but... But but those were the days, lah. So you know, mm. you know, you, you guys might wonder why you know why uh, if you go to the female toilet today, or I mean, if you are a female and you go to the female toilet today in the TSL office, right? Yeah. Okay, because are actually very big, lah. Yeah. And I don't know. I, maybe I'm compensating for the fact that you know last time we had a very small shitty toilet and I was a bad provider of good toilets, and therefore I decided to make the you know cubicles a lot bigger. Mm. <laughs> you know? yeah. But I mean, yeah. even before the whole McNair office. There was a period of time where it was just you and like two interns in your own house, like in your own house as an office. Am I right? Wait, hang on. Let me, let me, sorry, I, I got to correct this because yes. I don't know two interns in my own house. Sounds very, no. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> back then, I guess 
you, you know when TSF okay, I mean, I'll just go back right to the start like, like in uh, yeah. 2000 like, we registered our company in 2013 yeah yeah. but because that was the company where you know that was the time where we, you know we, that was the year we started making money but there's actually like a well, like a missing one year which is not documented anywhere and then yeah. that's at the time where we were probably in the you know, let's let's try an well, unprofitable pre-revenue stage essentially mm. right mm. and during that stage the TSL was very different from the TSL today well first of all there was there was, there was just one person, me, like working from my bedroom trying to make it work. Yeah. And I guess maybe I'll start with like, you know, the like the problem that I was trying to solve then. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and I, I think back then, you know, in 2012 in, on social media, things were very different. Mm. There wasn't like, a, you know, there weren't sites which were, you know, telling people that, that, what to do in Singapore and where to eat and whatnot. Mm. Uh, and and I think, well, and there was this narrative that was going on that Singapore is like a very boring place. Yeah. And mm. I didn't like that lah, because I, th- I thought that, I, I, you know, I've traveled around and, I have always thought that Singapore is still like the best. It's still my like, my favorite country, and mm. I, I wanted to change that that perception, you know, that so that people know that you know. But it's not that it's not people's fault that people think Singapore is boring. It's just that there isn't the media right there in, enough media right right yeah. not, right then like covering mm. things to do and attractions and whatnot and telling people where to go. So mm. yeah, so that was one of our mission, mm. our missions when we started. And the other mission was to introduce more positive content uh, to the space because back then there were sites like the real Singapore um, and the content that they were producing is was not positive la, and it was dodgy. you know there was like a <laughs> like a cloud of negativity you know if you go on like Facebook social yeah. media and you yeah, know, yeah. I thought that you know it'd be nice if one day you know there were other sites as well also which, mm. which did more positive content mm. and I don't know I don't I don't know if like, well I, I guess in Singapore right now things have changed a lot because we do have a lot of like sites like this now uh, which yeah. I'll say or some TSR inspired yeah. that produce a lot of positive content and then people you know focus on like positive things lah. I don't know what the social media landscape is like in other countries like I don't know Thailand or whatever whether they have like these style of TSR equivalents or if it's like you know still like in the 2012 you were there mm. yeah so um, that was that lah. like you know as I mentioned in the previous episode like if you guys haven't watched that please watch that previous episode <laughs> about the creative industry <laughs> Yes. Okay. And then, you know, when I started TSL, there was no no business plan. It was just like mm. back then. I think it's very idealistic. It would be like, okay, let me just let's just create something of value to people, and then like money will come yeah. in, and then like uh, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll we'll even have some employees besides me one day. And <laughs> so, uh, the first version of TSL was it was sort of like a trip advisor sort of review site, you know. And mm. back then, mm. I just had a yeah again like like lots of you have lots of idealism when you first start out. Mm. And back then, I thought that you know, um, it doesn't. It, it, I, I used to advise a lot for my travels and planning, and I always get a better experience because of that. And I wanted to bring that and make it like hyper local because I didn't think it, it made much sense for like um maybe like a American to come to Singapore and say okay, like the best chili crab is at Jumbo, because <laughs> the only chili crab that he's eaten is at Jumbo as well. So yeah. I thought <laughs> that, you know maybe if it's like, like Newton Food Center, locals, yeah, right. <laughs> Newton- <laughs> If locals were the ones, you know, who actually were the ones writing and yeah. and and they would have like better information. Mm. Quite better yeah, information. Yeah. And that's why I call it the smart local. Lah. That's how we got its name. Mm-hmm. Mm. Right. But of course, in reality, <laughs> reality things do not play out like that. <laughs> so, you know, like, well, so what had to change? Like, like well, um, well, yeah, like people did not, did not, did not want to write in uh, because it is a lot of effort, it's a lot of time, mm. and I think the culture is quite different. And like Westerners, they they do a lot of positive affirmations. I feel you know when mm. uh, you, when you like something, you know people are going to shout out about it uh, yeah. a lot in Western culture. And Singapore, mm. it's quite different. So the reviews they're getting mm. are quite skewed. Like every time you know someone was uh, had an issue with like maybe their Q10 seller, the product never come to their door, then they'll yeah. go and write something negative like about like Q10 or Lazada or Shopee or whatever, right? And I realized that, no, you know, this is not like living up to our mission of creating positive content. We're not creating positive content. <laughs> yeah. So. It became a renting platform, is it? it sort a platform of, yeah, for angry right? people. Uh, we were getting about, I, I guess, 100,000 views a month back then, which is not great. 100,000 views. And it's predominantly by search. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, back then there was, yeah, Facebook was still relatively new in Singapore. So oh, yeah. it was still, Facebook, you know, in that era, right, it was, it was very social based, you know, like you would go there and like you check what your friends are doing. That yeah, was how I like the old this. Facebook was used. Yeah, I remember so this. And, 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 and that was also like, to, that, that was the era where Instagram was so premature. It, it barely existed. I remember those times, those good old days of pet society. <laughs> Farmville. 
<laughs> Restaurant City was the best, guys. I just want to say. But anyways, <laughs> continue, Brian, about your your life of in TSL. So I mean, you you basically started a brand new like concept on almost a brand new mm. platform. So like, like you were in that sense like almost a trailblazer in that way. So was there any like there were definitely growing pains. So what are some of the like the adaptations that you yeah that you first started out with, but then you had to make because yeah like, you realized that it doesn't work. I guess we could, you know, we, I, you know, I asked myself like we could continue on that route and like get hundred thousand viewers and and like um not get ever talking with requests and whatnot, but you know, I, or we could change and do something different, right? Yeah. And yeah. back then we were very inspired by Buzzfeed because there were uh, you know Buzzfeed yes. like kind of like Buzzfeed kind of like invented the the listicle, you know, mm. and yeah. there were a ton of Buzzfeed listicles on Facebook. You know, every time you open your feed, there's a Buzzfeed listicle back then. Yes. So oh yeah, that was truly the renaissance of the Buzzfeed type of content. Yeah. And it was like, okay, so we were very heavily inspired by that. And I was like, okay, so why not? Let's just try creating a, like a listicle as an experiment. I remember that, you know, like the first like big listicle, which I wrote, I remember that I, I wrote it at about like 10, 10 o'clock, some, like a, at a very late time. I remember that yeah, it was called like 52 things to do in Singapore before you die. Mm. And with that, you know, that very clickbaity title at the end, uh, which was, yeah stereotypical of that time la, that you were and mm. I remember that I was very optimistic la. I thought that yeah I, I can finish this in two hours but no of course I could not finish that <laughs> the article actually I, I spent the whole night doing that article you know I, I think I think I yeah I think I probably slept like at 6am and then the next day I took a flight to to Krabi mm. and yeah you know I, I didn't think much of it la. I just like then this article is taking me a very long time it better be worth it and then I you know I just published <laughs> the article and then forgot about it and then <laughs> so I was on my flight to yeah, on the side of Krabi, then I was like doing the whole island hopping thing in Krabi, right? Yeah. And then suddenly I get, I like check my phone and I see like 200 emails. Like, oh my God, what is going on? Right? Because uh, back <laughs> then 200 emails, yeah, it's, I don't get that often. Now yeah. it's like, uh, you'll get 200 emails, it's like, it's like Monday. But back then, it was <laughs> rare. So, 200 is a slow uh, day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, so I was like, yeah, I so I checked my email and I, uh, and, I saw, and I was like getting all these survey notifications saying like you know the the super died and you had to go and reset it and whatnot. And then I remember like you know being on a boat and then logging into the shell terminal and like restarting the SQL server. Uh, and I thought, wow, technology is very amazing. But I also thought that wow, uh, we've got like hundred thousand people who visited the site on that day on that one day. Oof, and wow. Like, mm, okay, this is an improvement. Thousand people visiting site. In one day, maybe let's do more of this and, you know, less of what we previously were doing. So, yeah. okay, uh, we, we pivoted and we started doing listicles. And very soon after, you know, so the, I guess that, you know, that was our first mistake. It was like maybe not understanding the market enough mm. or maybe, uh, well, not doing enough market research or maybe it was uh, just a mistake that we had to make to find out. Mm. Mm. So Part of growth, uh, part of growth. Yeah, and so what happened after that? Uh, well, we finally got clients who were interested. They were, they were writing in for the first time. And for the first time in my life, I was getting emails from clients saying, wow, you know, uh, let I want to do something with TSL. Yeah. That's because for the first time, you know, we are reaching out to more people who are not just, you know, if you think about it, it uh, probably the reason is uh, when people were finding our site last time, it was because they were typing in some things that they were specifically searching for. Mm. And then, you know, they might see a review listing of it. Yeah. Uh, and then when you know when we transition to the Facebook model, well, like essentially, uh, what what was happening is that people were being exposed to things that they didn't know that they were you know they wanted to read. You know, it's kind of like mm. you know bubble cha cha is the is the shit you never knew that you wanted. You know that, mm. that, that, that sort of thing. Yeah, right? it's been brought into your life, but it's cool, it's nice, and then you are going to enjoy it. So I guess you know that's a huge difference between Facebook and Google search. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and then we finally moved into our our first office. Uh, I remember, okay, some of the struggles that we had. Well, I remember I had to make a, like, well, it was a big decision for me at that time. Yeah. Um, moving to our first office, which was a service office. Mm. It was very, very small. It was like the size of two toilet cubicles. Mm. And uh, mm. I remember, like, I could choose option A. You have uh, you, you have no windows. <laughs> and option B, you have windows. <laughs> and, well, of course, I, I would want windows, right? Yeah. Uh, but windows is like 300 bucks more, you know? So I'm like... Um, if I'm paying like one, if like windows are going to be like 30% or 20% of the van cost or whatnot, like is it worth investing in windows? Yeah. Of course, mm. I decided to invest in, win- in windows. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. I, th- I think welfare is, is, you know, creating a positive culture is important. Yeah. So we got windows. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a whole like story that a lot of people don't know. And I mean, there's a whole part of TSL that a lot of people also kind of very interested in, which is like the hiring process and how the TSL 
stars that they see on YouTube right now or the people mm. that they know how would they like how they were hired or like your early memories of them so yeah. I mean Joyce or like spill the tea why don't we ask why don't we talk about Joyce Joyce is everyone's favourite let's target right? a few people no let's target a few <laughs> people so we spill the tea on them come John you can win <laughs> I want to know about Joyce I don't know Joyce how Joyce first, was yeah. like because I mean Joyce to me now is like this like super boss lady who is like like not not boss as in bossy, but like boss is in like very stable, very like very uh cool headed, very everything. But then like mm. I just want to know like back then she she was still a writer. Like how was she like when you first hired her? Yeah, and everything. Okay, well I'll talk about Joyce as an intern maybe. Yeah, uh, what ah, I okay. remember of Joyce maybe. Like okay, so well when she first wrote in, I think she wanted to write freelance for us, and I was like, uh, no, you got to do an internship with us. <laughs> I mean that's my standard. <laughs> standard response and uh, mm. really I could tell from her like the way she wrote her application that oh this was a like you know a different type of applicant because she mm. knew how to communicate the value that she could bring to the company very well so it's, it's, it's also something which you know which I suggest anyone who's applying for a job to do sometimes people are just like you know they just they talk a lot about themselves but they don't necessarily yeah. talk about you know how they can add certain value to the company and it's quite hard for a recruiter to see that mm. so mm. She was like, you know, I've done like like these articles before and they got a lot of shares and I, I looked at the articles and they were written well and they were, had interesting angles as well. And immediately there was a lot of like uh, value communicated like, of, of what she could do. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, how she was as an intern, she, Joyce was, as an intern was very, mm, well, what is the correct word for it? Uh, she's quite disassociated with like things in general in the office at that time because, and I'm, I'm thinking it's because uh, of her experience in SQ, uh, oh. I'm, I'm guessing, you know. So she like had this separate, like, work is work, and then outside of work is outside of work. Yeah. There, there was this boundary that she she had. Yeah. And I think it was just really like, I don't, I'm just speculating, like, yeah, yeah, that's Joyce, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Joyce, if you're watching I, I'm this, guessing it was comment. because, you know, <laughs> it was probably because of like a, a defense mechanism, like, essentially, you know, she learned that, uh, like, okay, let's, okay, okay. it's better to treat work as work in, at SQ, so let me just do this at this new work, workplace. Mm-hmm. And she really opened up and changed a lot once she became a full-time, mm. right, a full-time employee. And now she's like a superstar, right? I mean, so, yeah. yeah, that is the joy story. I mean, like, mm. the reason why I asked this is partially also because, like, a whole part... Joy is part our best in- performing episode, is it? <laughs> no, <laughs> hey, I'm more I'm more deep than that. Okay, okay, wait. Is it because <laughs> I know you share <laughs> I'm just I'm trying to link it back to entrepreneurship, guys. Let me be a host right here. So like entrepreneurship, <laughs> like in entrepreneurship, the whole big part of it is it's not just having a good idea. It's also building a good team around you, hiring the right people, yeah. uh, developing the right people. So I just want to know, like, from Brian's perspective, like. Do you have any tips for future entrepreneurs when they are like hiring, when they are trying to get new talents or mm. or like develop new talents? Like what's the mindset they should be going into or like how much do you think they should invest in like the human capital, which I think is a lot more intangible, but it's also very important. Yeah. Okay. I think employees are the most important part of the company for sure. Uh, and it's, if you manage to, well, I think you first have to create content in a certain way or like, I think you, I believe that you, you, you attract what you are. So if you, well, you create content in a certain way, you might attract talents who believe in your vision and like the content and they want to join. Mm. So I think, well, I think that is what TSL has done, right, in terms of the YouTube perspective, uh, because a lot of people know us because of our YouTube channel, right? And mm. they see that there's a very positive culture and they want to, well, I guess most of them will want to be part of that. Mm. That's why they mm. apply. And, and so it, it starts with, I guess, creating that sort of content uh, that will attract that caliber of, of talent. And then when you have a lot of people applying, then you would pick who would be the most suitable in terms of ability. There's also yeah. culture fit. Uh, mm. Culture fit is extremely important. And and oh, the, if in order to like create a very positive environment, I feel that there are certain things you have to look for in candidates and you have to like filter out certain people. Yeah. And mm. uh, if not, you know, like it, it just really takes like one, two, three employees who are like very negative and could quickly turn into the, you know, the, the company environment to, to a place which people do not like. Mm. And if, yeah, if you are the boss, you have to be very, very careful about mm. that and monitor the situation and yeah, hire the correct people. You know, if, the, if there's some, if there's something I want to, I want to add to this is I, I feel personally as someone who, who is in TSL working full time and benefiting from, from the, the culture and the systems in TSL is that like, I think uh, as a whole, our company is one that, doesn't doesn't you know scrimp on hiring decisions and it has always been the case that we always have like a 
strong foundation um, mm. in the current staff members. And I think that is something that when I initially joined, I I saw and like uh, it's very true to what what we showcase also in our content. Mm. And I think that's quite rare for workplaces in, in, in Singapore. Mm. And yeah, I mean, it's definitely it's not it didn't it didn't just come by chance. I mean, I mean to to be fair, isn't I think on YouTube a lot of people think that TSL is like very uh happy go lucky, don't do anything, just over here have fun, do SG try all day long. That, but that's the trap. <laughs> that I know, that's <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, guys, uh, no la. <laughs> so It's mm. it's fun. It's definitely positive, but I think there's a lot of like elements of hard work that a lot of people don't yeah. really notice. And people immediately no and 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 now 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 there is that now now that you know having discussed this you know watching watching the happiness and the positivity on YouTube right now you know that there is method to the madness you know there is actually mm. a reason and it, and it makes perfect sense you know especially when you when you start working in 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 uh, in a company like TSL it becomes you know something that 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 creates an environment that you have uh, more to be grateful for than, than than to hate and I think that's that's important yeah. And I mean, on the topic of hiring, I also have this other question that is not on the script, but I just wanted to ask, like, there's always a, is, there's always a dilemma between someone who is like super talented, but with like a lot of potential, with, with like, maybe, okay, maybe someone who is not as talented for now, like maybe his portfolio is not the best, but he has a, a lot of potential because you can see like, oh, mm. this person is probably going to improve a lot versus someone who mm. is just naturally from the get-go very talented. Do you, do you normally tend to gamble on the more potential person or do you tend to go with the safe route of just getting the best possible at that time? Mm. I think it is it is very uh, pertinent to also consider like a person's essentially potential ability to its mm. full extent. So like, because when you hire employees, sometimes you're not just thinking of like a, maybe a replacement position for one year. No, you're thinking of like, well, you ideally want to have somebody who would stay in the company for a long period of time. Yeah. I mean, while well, a boss w- would want that perspective and um, and eventually be able to move up and, you know, take on bigger positions and mm-hmm. maybe even do management or, or whatnot. So mm-hmm. it is an important consideration. Uh, if like of, if like people, if their skill were equal, of course, we would take someone who we feel that, you know, has higher potential to, mm-hmm. to you know, to be much better than he is now. So potential is something which, yeah, we, we look out for, for sure. But mm. if like the question is how, you know, how, how do we value ability, like pure ability versus maybe culture fit? Yeah. And this is something which I learned, another mistake which I learned the hard way. Uh, when, I, when we first started out, like, I would just hire people based on ability. You know, I, I like, yeah. didn't care like, wow, this person, photography is so good. I'm going to hire this person or like, yeah. like, like so well. And mm. it was quite silly because, uh, yeah, it's it usually like if you hire somebody who maybe doesn't have a good culture fit, there are going to be a lot of issues and a lot of problems. Mm. And I found over the years that, you know, I changed my stance. Uh, it would be, I would I would much rather prefer someone who has like very good attitude, good culture fit, and maybe like average ability as compared to someone with like high ability, but like, you know, low culture fit. And mm. yeah, I, f- I feel it makes yeah. a, a very big difference. And it's the, you know, the intangibles, which, you know, form the, the fabric of your company's culture. And most people yeah. don't, don't like, well, it would be a first, mm. like, you know, like most full-time bosses will not realize that yet. Nah. Mm. And I mean, mm. as TSL is growing, like this entire company culture becomes like a lot more significant and a lot uh, more uh, yeah. difficult to, I guess, control because the bigger your company is, the harder it is for you to control every aspect of it, right? So I just wanted, like, next, leading up to the next question, I just wanted to know, like, apart from this, I mean, you can elaborate a little bit on the company culture, but apart from that, are there any other problems that came with TSL growing? Like, I mean, growing is a good thing because, like, of course, you want, we all want growth and, and it comes with its own fair share of great stuff. But what are some of the problems that came with, the growing pains that came with like also hiring like 100 people and now that you're in a brand new office and it's significantly bigger? I think communication gets a lot harder because now there are multiple levels you know, that you have to go through. Before when, before when we were like just an outfit of like 20 people, like everybody knew everybody very well and you know, we had a very close-knit community. You know, then, and now that we went to like McNair and then suddenly things are different because well, we have individual rooms in McNair and the team is separated on two levels. So I was like, okay, the next office that we are getting, you know, we are definitely not going to do like a two level thing because you know, sometimes like the video people, the people in the YouTube team might not know the people in the editorial team. Yeah. Right? And 
Uh, so yeah, people will feel like I mean it's always weird like when we have like someone in the company like don't know who that person is, don't know what their name is and what and whatnot. And they and they've been coming for like two years, you know, one year, you know, and, oh, oh, because no. you're on level two, I'm on level one. <laughs> uh, so he, that is one thing, I guess the 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 information uh, transfer also because it does take time to go and impart knowledge and train people, mm. and sometimes also like not all this knowledge is also passed on. You know, it's kind of like the game where you where you like we spend someone's year and then the person at the end of the Open line telephone. gets like a quite different message, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. I, uh, information transfer also is an issue. Yeah. Well, and it comes with size, right? These kind of things. For sure. Like all, like all companies which grow to a certain size will eventually reach the stage and you're not as nimble mm-hmm. as before. Like mm-hmm. previously, you could just like, you know, outside, uh, previously it will just be like me like the sign, okay, let's do this, let's do that. And sometimes people will think that's crazy impulsive. And obviously when we come to like a, you know, become like 140 plate person company, we can, we can no longer make these decisions. You know, I have to like run it by, you know, run it by Joyce, run it by Zeph. Hey, you know, guys, what do you think? And it's very important that I, I get the opinion line, the buying line. They go and, you know, make sure that it's a very uh, strategic and robust thing they are doing yeah. because it's not affecting like 20 people anymore. It's affecting 140 people. And there's a lot yeah. of responsibility that comes with that. So like, I mean, I mean, that's a big problem with like every big company. I mean, this I don't think this is a brand new concept. I think most people will be able to figure out figure this out. Like the bigger you are, the less adaptable you are with to like different things, especially when industry changes. And that's when small companies like TSL once was will be able to rise up because they are able to adapt a lot better. So like, uh, personally, have you done anything like within TSL to like kind of mitigate that, or is that something that you feel is just something you guys just have to live with for now? I feel that when you get to a certain, uh, like a certain size, and you maybe you lose that maybe that uh, entrepreneur mindset because you are of this certain size and you're very comfortable to the way things are done. Yeah. that's when you've got to come up with like an R and D or like an experimental arm So like you know that's what companies do. They have like well, companies who sell products they usually have an R and D arm to like you know stay updated and keep things fresh and, and research new products, right? Mm. I think uh, media companies also perhaps could benefit from having a like you know like a department and their specific goal is to innovate and create yeah. new content try new formats and John is in such <laughs> that's a that's why I was going to jump in to say because <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do that's what Chow and I do so yeah John what, how, how does that work? how does that work? well okay literally our department is called Innovate yeah. and and that is basically how it works. Okay, no, no. I think, I think, I think to, I think, no, it's a great summary of, of my role because uh, I, I initially started out as a, co- as a content creator, you know? Yeah. Much like you, right? So yes. starting out as a content creator, it, it, it honed this skill within me to, to identify my, my uh, product and to be able to identify my skill set. And then eventually, because of the interest of uh, R&D in that sense, to try to continue to monetize and find new ways to to make new things for TSL without without just uh you know being stuck in the cycle and have, have and 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 not having the agility that we used to right mm. so hence you know my department was born and then we are supposed to be the ones that uh try to provide that fleet food work that uh comes with the small companies to try to break the new ground first and then eventually if we project in forward enough and then we break enough ground we can bring the the main parties to come in to fill that gap and then we move on to the next frontier. So that is basically the role that my department, you know, You just make yourself fulfills. sound damn noble, by the way. <laughs> I, <laughs> what can I like, say? If you want like me hero. to sell your product, please tell me <laughs> I'll help you sell your product. <laughs> you may sound like you're saving TSL by yourself, like single-handedly. <laughs> I am not. No, but like, honestly, that is, that is in essence my role because yeah. like, I'm a visual person, so we visualize it as like, you know, we project forward, do something first, and then eventually someone has to come in. And that's why now yeah. my current my current job scope takes me to to Mushare News to try to create content that is monetizable. And then along with us, we have an intern from Mushare News that eventually we will want to hand this project over to. And that's mm. that's that's my my life. Our, our our team motto is change is the only constant. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a good motto to have. And uh, okay, so like going on that, like as you are getting bigger as a company and like you have been previously, uh, you shared that you have a lot of like growing pains when it comes to starting TSL. So like mm. from what we can see, of course, entrepreneurship has like, it comes with a lot of like emotional baggage and commitment and uh, like I won't say pros, but like there's a lot yeah. of like sacrifices that you have to make. Especially 6 like- 6 a.m. emails. 
6 a.m. emails, right onto 6 a.m. <laughs> you have to decide whether you want to have Windows or not, that kind of things. So like, I mean, I, I, I would think that it's very difficult to be an entrepreneur, especially because it feels very lonely at times and like emotionally that can be take a little, a little bit on the toll on someone who is trying to start their own business. So uh, personally, have you actually, like personally, like emotionally, do you actually f- like face a big problem when you're starting TSL or even now as it's getting bigger? I definitely felt emotional at times and uh, I've also definitely made lots of mistakes when I was emotional. <laughs> so uh, mm. that's, yeah, that's the, the, that's probably, I guess, you know, the most mistakes, the most mis- mistakes I've made are always the mistakes where, you know, when things get emotional and then you kind of, you say things that you don't mean. Mm. Um, and well, uh, how, how has it uh, affected us? Um, well, I, I think, don't think that entrepreneurship is, for everybody, lah, because it is quite, I guess, romanticized in some way by you know uh, yeah. entrepreneurs like Gary Vee and and so on. And yeah. I mean, they are all very good entrepreneurs who I listen to as well. Mm. But mm. most of the time, they're always sharing the you know you only hear the success story. Like you hear the filtered version of like the ten percent of people yeah. of people of companies who succeed. You know, you never hear like the ninety percent of people who don't. And some and like you know entrepreneurship can sound like a very glamorous thing. So if you go into entrepreneurship thinking that you know you're just going to have uh, fun and like become very rich very quickly then it's not it's not the correct mindset line you'll be yeah in for a very a uh, rude awakening uh, mm-hmm. and yeah for example you know if you if you desire work-life balance right mm. do not be an entrepreneur <laughs> you are not going to get work-life balance you're not gonna get what mm. like you know like when, when i started tsl uh while i was working also well okay when i started TSL, actually uh I, w- I was coming out of a like a long-term relationship and i went to like completely distract myself with work, you know, mm. graph myself with work. And I was working kind of like probably like 16 hour days and where yeah. I would just essentially, you know, sleep in the office. I slept in the office for the for, for quite a while. Mm. Right. And I'll just eat, right? Essentially for, for sustenance. And then after that I would go back to work. And that was my life. Mm. And then after that, three years passed, you know. Uh, mm. so mm. uh I feel that you need to have like wow, you well I feel that you need as to be able to put in those hours because if you don't put in those hours, someone else who wants it more would, and you mm. know, they would overwork you. And yeah. Overwork you as in like they would, they outperform you. Mm. And, mm. and you have a lot of responsibility as a, as, as a founder to yeah. be putting in the hours and working. Mm. So I don't think like work-life balance, yeah, do not do, do entrepreneurship. If you feel that, you know, like you get a lot, you get anxiety, anxiety, or you get, you know, you get like, uh, you worry a lot and you have trouble controlling negative, negative thought, right? Uh, yeah, especially if your neuroticism levels are quite high, mm. I also not recommend it because it's not going to be very healthy for you. Mm. You know, yeah, you don't want to put yourself into sh- such a situation. Yeah. And, you know, it's perfectly fine also being, you know, joining a company, having a good work-life balance and, and well, well, not having to worry about so many decisions and whatnot. And mm. I, I feel that it's totally fine. It really depends on knowing yourself as a person, like, where would you fit? Because yeah, yeah there are trade offs in in everything, uh, and yeah. if you be, decide to like go down the route of the entrepreneur, yeah, well, the good thing is if it succeeds, right? Then yeah, there is like a there might be a, a big payday. You might be like Instagram and you sell a company for one billion to Facebook. You know that yeah. you know there is that sort of uh, I guess uh, reward that lures people into entrepreneurship. Right? But you really have got to go in with the you know the correct expectations of it. If not, you're just going to be very unhappy, lah. I think what you shared here was very important, you know, about about the fact that that people see the success stories and they don't necessarily uh, understand what are the potential um, struggles and failures. Yeah. And I think that is very true for for all industries, you know. Like, you know, recently we've been doing a lot of interviews with members of parliament and stuff like that. And on uh, on social media, a lot of times the general sentiment is people like, oh, MP just take money, MP just blah, 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 blah. But it's not the case. You know, after speaking to some of them, I, I wonder, I wonder how they maintain their their families. And it's like, true. like yeah, they work seven days a week. Um, they still gotta look cheery when they visit you and visit you often enough where so that you feel they care when they clearly do. You know, and this is so tough. And I think as an entrepreneur, this these are quite similar in that sense. And the investment sometimes is something that people don't necessarily see. And I mean like that on the topic of like emotion handling emotionality and all that. Like, do you have any tips on for entrepreneurs or people who are like aspiring entrepreneurs on how to maintain a at least somewhat of a semblance of a emotional control or like at least uh, some uh, emotional well-being? 
I do have an answer for this because yeah. this is one which I was trying to solve. You know, why would I sometimes say things out of anger and, you know, regret the, 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 these decisions and I wanted to understand better. Mm. So, uh, so essentially when, when, when people make decisions, you use your cerebral cortex to make the decision. That is the logical part of your brain. Yeah. And when you guys uh, get a lot of emotions and get angry or upset or sad or whatever, the, the brain which takes over, the part of the brain which takes over, it's called the amygdala. Amygdala, and, uh, yeah. It, it, and it's also called like, you know, they also call this term the uh, amygdala hijack. Mm. When you have this part of your brain, which is now respons- which is responsible for the emotions, it overrides, essentially it overrides the thinking of your uh, cerebral cortex. Mm. And, and when that happens, you tend to say things, you know, because this is a part of the brain which has emotion and not logic, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and, and therefore, you know, when that happens, you kind of say things which you don't mean and which you will regret. And, you know, the, okay, so what are some measures? Well, you know, people say, uh, okay, if you're angry, like count to 10. Uh, and that does not work, and it does not work because it takes an average of yeah, it takes an average of twenty minutes, you know, for your brain to go back to using its logical part of the brain. So, yeah. if I had a uh, well, if I had some advice to give, it would be to you know, if there's this long text message that you want to go and send to your partner when they've made you angry, or there's this email, angry email that you want to send to your client or whatever, like do not send it yet. Just sit on it, leave it in your draft or whatever. Whatever you do, do not send it yet. Like, uh, mm. wait for the next day or wait one hour or whatnot. And then you see things with a lot more clarity. And that's usually what happens. Like, the next day, you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I even wanted to type this or send this. It just makes no yeah. sense at all. Mm. And mm. yeah, because, you know, the, the, the logical part of your brain is working again. And, you know, it will make total sense that yeah. that's a bad decision. So my strategy right now is do not respond. If, <laughs> if I'm emotional, do not respond. Do, ne- do not make any decision when you're emotional. Just delay and well eventually you have to respond to it but just do not do it at that moment yeah mm-hmm. i think this is very important because because like any entrep- entrepreneurship has a lot of uh relationship building you know yes. uh being entwined with, with, with being an entrepreneur and yeah. this strategy of not saying something you regret is actually a- extremely important in any form of relationship building you know like yeah. let's say you have a romantic relationship and you fight with someone it's very easy to fight on the spot and that fight will just go ugly and no one will solve any problems. Shout out to our audiences. You, if, you are, if you tell me that hasn't happened to you, then you are lying. Okay? <laughs> but the best way to approach this kind of conflict, I feel, personally, I, I do take that stance also if I do encounter any, any arguments or whatever, right? Is yeah. to like, I don't want to say anything I will regret right now. Let me get back to you when I calm down. And I think that should be the, the attitude, you know? Yeah. But except, of course, you don't send that to your client. Lah, huh? You just Does pause it? and <laughs> right, say, don't press send. You I just type out the draft and you're like, okay, I, wanna, I don't want to say anything I regret. I'll say it to you later. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, the whole point of like, relation building is very important. I mean, uh, I, I, won't, I won't say I'm an entrepreneur. I won't say that I'm starting a business or anything. But like, even from HTHT, one thing I learned from HTHT is like, like, everyone knows each other. And like, somehow, if you manage to get one person, you're going to gonna get, you're going to be able to get another one just based on the fact yeah. that you got one person on the show. So it's like, the world is so small and like, eventually, the more people you know, right, the better, the better place you are. Like, you are be in a better place to succeed. Uh. So even for HTHT, I don't know Annette personally, but because we know her sister, we managed to get her on the show. Yeah. And like, a lot of people like, Ben King, like, I didn't know Ben King personally. Ben King didn't know who the hell I was. But like, Fauzi knew Ben King, so we managed to ask Ben yeah. King Fauzi. So those are things like you cannot just burn the bridge, especially if you want to be someone who is an entrepreneur and you decide yeah, you need to have people on your side. Lah. And mm. uh, I think if you want to succeed in life, right, you you have to be able to work with people and get along well with people. Mm. And I would value social intelligence higher than just like pure intelligence because of that. Because mm. usually, you know, if you're working together, you're working as a team, you, uh, you are able to achieve a lot more. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. And with that, I think we cover a lot of ground in this episode. Is there anything else you want to ask, John? Yeah. Um. Wow. Okay. This is actually actually a very interesting topic because personally, when I was uh when I was still in secondary school, I think we were exposed a lot. Uh, funnily enough, because I was in Catholic high, I don't know why, but funnily enough, we were exposed a lot towards like entrepreneurship as like a uh how to say a potential um career or, or future thinking kind of kind of path you know which I think is relatively rare in our in our schooling system but I, I mean maybe, maybe, maybe Brian can take this question so um, 
what will be, you know, one, one, once again, one, one thing you would like to say to a young person who is considering this, especially, you know, someone who is in their teens, right? Because um, I feel that making the, cho- the choice to be an entrepreneur should, should, can come at any point in their lives. And as a working professional, you have a lot more perspective. But if let's say you are a young person, maybe like um, the people from Carousel doing, doing uh, fresh, you know, fresh grad things or haven't even grad deciding that I want to try to be an entrepreneur. What is one thing that you would advise them to do? I think something that, you know, it's interesting you bring out schools because I think that something yeah. with schools I feel could be doing more is imparting maybe more skills beyond like uh, memorization or like things which lead to like acquiring crystallized knowledge of things, right? Mm. Uh, mm. And one of one of this would probably, I guess, if, if like if schools were able to inculcate habits in their students to the point where all their students become uh, like students of life and they yeah. are self-learners and they go and, uh, you know, they go and seek out ways and try to educate themselves. Because I know that both of you guys are like that. You know, I'm sure that you guys watch a lot of YouTube mm. content right, yeah. as well. I do that as well. And I feel that, you know, it has made up for that gap which is missing like, during my education because mm. like, school never taught me how to like film videos, for example, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness, um, yeah. Or like how to like do like how to manage people or how to like or how the or what the amygdala even is, right? You know, yeah. you just <laughs> you, hear, you, you hear this from YouTube, right? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, if if well I would guess like a for a young person, like the moment that you invest in yourself, that knowledge just compounds through your entire life. Whenever you watch a video, well, if you're on YouTube, well, I would recommend like sometimes, you know, watching other videos as well. Like was, there's this channel which I found the other day called Improvement Pill. And they were, it was very interesting. They had like, like this video of, um, well, uh, they tier essentially all the best habits to have from like tier S to tier C or something, right? <laughs> uh-huh. and, and then they would rate, you know, like what habits you should focus on. And for example, they would rate like reading as a very, very important habit mm. to try and inculcate yeah. in your life. Mm. So... Uh, that's what I would recommend uh, for entrepreneurs to like just so that there will be that constant progression. So you know, not, so imagine if you you know like your life was a graph, right? For example, on the y axis you have time. No, sorry, on y axis you have like a skill level, and on the x axis you have time. Yeah. And yeah. even if you are just you know improving by a small incremental amount, right? Your graph is always going to be like upward trending. It's going to be like maybe something like this, whereas other people might flatline a bit after a while. Or mm. when they, when I go to school, and then maybe like a nice peak, and then you know flatline. Then maybe they meet like a friend who shares them like a some nugget of wisdom. Then boom, there's a mini spike, you know. Uh, but then you know if you are if you are self uh, well if you make this a habit like self learning, like right, you're just going to constantly give yourself you know that momentum, and your, mm. your line will just your, like, the gradient of line will be just steep and more consistent. Mm. And and then a lot of things, a lot of positive things will result as a byproduct of this. For example, you get better in your job, you get better in your relationships. Um, you'll get better in like if you want to start a company and whatnot mm. and it's all because of this I guess you know keystone habit that you develop mm. okay okay so one final personal question that I have for you so Brian you have a you have a you have a daughter right would you like her to be an entrepreneur next time <laughs> oh good question holy shit <laughs> I will have to see what her personality is like first because I think at the end of the day, like the strengths and weaknesses matching is very, very important. Mm. And I think a lot of it is also biological, you know, you like you can't really yeah. Mm. I mean I'm I'm of that view that, that some things are very um uh, yeah, it's it's nature more than nurture some things, but some things are also can be nurture, of course. Yeah. So if she just have, you know, like, you know, high in water season, I'll be like, No, you're gonna be unhappy and you're not gonna enjoy it. Like, do not do it for the sake of, you know, doing it. Uh, but if like she's like I feel like well, she's like resilient and she can like, you know, uh, work long hours and uh, she also like is uh, able to cost correct and she's able to, and she has like maybe an intellectual curiosity and she wants to yeah. go and like learn more about the world and whatnot. And I'll say, okay, like you can try this out and I'll try and guide her and mentor her. But I, I'll, I don't believe in like forcing someone to be someone that they're not, you know, it's really mm-hmm. just looking at trends and weaknesses and, you know. Maybe not this, but you know, maybe, but you'll be great as like a support or like a two IC, you know, or like a yeah, a support to your boss, you know. Yeah, and so totally fine. Awesome, awesome. And with that, and with that, <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we have come to the end of our second episode with Brian. So this is a topic on entrepreneurship. I hope you'll enjoy our little chat here with Brian. Thank yes. you so much once again, Brian, for coming on our show. Thank you, uh, in future, you know. 
once again, leave in the comments below if you've got any any other topics that you'd like us to discuss. You know, we can bring Brian back and we could have a, have a chat once again. And uh, yes, we'll be seeing you all real soon. Yes, in fact, this is the number 38 episode. So we only have mm. two more episodes left before the end of the season. So after that, we're going to take a long good break because I am a tired human being. So like, mm. <laughs> two more episodes. So just uh, look forward to the rest of the season and follow us on at, at iomo.pod if you haven't yet. Yeah. And yeah. And see follow you guys. the smart local SG, SG, uh, uh, TH. Everything. I can't remember all the rest. MY. Go and go and search. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and with that, thank you guys so much. Stay safe and see yeah. you guys next week. Yep. Bye. Bye.